Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss emphasis of matter or matters and other matters paragraph. Those paragraph could be listed as part of the auditor's report. As auditing students, as CPA students, we need to understand what each one is and be able to list some examples in case you are giving multiple choice questions on the exam, able to answer what is emphasis of a matter, what's other matters paragraph. Starting with emphasis of matters, I'm going to abbreviate as EOM. What is EOM? This paragraph is used when the auditor wants to emphasize. They want to raise attention to specific matter regarding, please notice I highlighted the financial statements and the notes. I highlighted this in yellow on purpose to raise your attention. That emphasis of a matter is for, kind of, it's an irony, it's to raise attention. And this is why I highlighted this in yellow. When we have something, emphasis of a matter, it deals with something on the financial statements and on the notes. Simply put, it's additional communication when considered necessary. Now, when considered necessary, maybe the auditor's discretion or professional judgment believe that emphasis is necessary. That could be one case where it's kind of in a quote optional, but the auditor thinks it's required. And under certain circumstances, emphasis of matters is required. So I'm going to have to show you some examples when it's basically, I'm going to put in quote optional. Optional means based on the auditor's judgment, based on the auditor, auditor's discretion. And we will discuss cases where it's necessary, it's required, it's a must to have an emphasis of matter paragraph. Simply put, either or, the purpose of this paragraph is to draw the user's attention to matters or matters presented. Again, notice I am I am drawing your attention that that information that we talk about in the EOM, it's already presented or disclosed in the notes of the financial statements. And it's necessary to fundamentally, not necessarily, to fundamentally understand the financial statements. And simply, what are the financial statements? We are looking at the basic financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statements of stockholders' equity, and the notes. So anything, when we say EOM, EOM deals with stuff either in the notes, disclosure, or stuff, issues on the financial statements. Simply put, we are highlighting. Notice I'm highlighting in yellow. I'm waving my hands here. Basically, we're highlighting what we need to highlight in that EOM. But that highlight refers back to something in the financial statements or in the notes. You might be asking, why does he keep repeating himself? You're going to see why. Because I need to differentiate EOM from simply OM, other matters. Okay. Now, bear in mind, EOM, emphasis of matter, is not the key auditing matters. Those are not the CAMs. Also, cannot be used. We, we can't have an EOM if the opinion is something other than modified, means clean opinion. So EOM, emphasis of matter, is used when we have a clean opinion. So that does not change. We are still given a clean opinion. We don't change our opinion. We could have an unqualified, I'm sorry, unmodified, since we are discussing a AICPA report, unmodified clean opinion, and add that emphasis of a matter. It's not part of the opinion, because the opinion is still clean, and it's a separate paragraph after the opinion titled emphasis of matter. So this is the background information that you need to know what is emphasis of a matter is. Now we're going to talk about other matters. Other matters is pretty straightforward. Refer to matters. Notice now I'm, I, I am drawing your attention, not presented or disclosed in the financial statements and the notes. And now you understand why I kept highlighting presented or disclosed in the financial statements presented and disclosed in the financial statements. Because when I got to other matters, when you have a paragraph called other matters, when you read it, that other matters don't deal with anything that's on the notes or the financial statements. So what are we discussing here? It deals with auditor's responsibilities related to laws and regulation. So something other than dealing with financial statements and notes of the financial statements. An example will be the auditor's responsibility. What are the auditor's responsibility? That's not in the financial statements. That's not in the notes of the financial statements. The best way to illustrate this concept is to actually look at some examples of EOM. Before we look at examples of EOM, I would like to share public opinion about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, 
My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. I'm going to start by looking at emphasis of matters that are considered optional. Again, what I mean by optional is that it's based on the auditor's discretion. The auditor thinks we should emphasize this point in the emphasis of matter paragraph. One is relate, related party transaction. Now, when we have related party transaction, we're going to have a note, for example, note 13. And under note 13, we're going to have related party transaction. And we're going to talk about our related party transactions. And when you see the notes, lecture, you will see what I mean by this. Simply put, we talk, for example, 60% uh, of our sales is to a related party. 30% uh, of our customers are related party, so on and so forth. That's fine. It's in the notes. Although it's in the notes, we think it's important to emphasize this matter in the report. Therefore, under emphasis of a matter paragraph, we talk about related party transaction. Two, material or important event occurring after the balance sheet date. We could have a major fire, a natural disaster, major funding event affecting the financial statements. Well, guess what? They're not, they, they are affecting something in the financial statements. Therefore, what we do, we want to emphasize. We want to emphasize those events. We put them in that paragraph. It could be a major catastrophe that has occurred or continue to have a significant influence on the, on the entity's financial numbers. We discussed that as well. Any pending or regulatory action or litigation, we also we can emphasize this. This could be in the notes. Although it's in the notes, we still emphasize it because we believe it's important. I want to emphasize one more topic that's optional, and that's substantial doubt. So we need to understand how substantial doubt is an optional disclosure as an EOM. If there was or there is a substantial doubt about the company as a going concern and the management have a plan to address and alleviate the issue. Simply put, there is a going concern, but based on the evidence collected by the auditor, the auditor believes the company has a plan in place to take care of the substantial doubt. Under those circumstances, the auditor may emphasize the, relate, the related disclosure in an EOM. Now remember, if there's a substantial doubt, there will be a disclosure in the notes discussing the substantial doubt. If the auditor believes the substantial doubt is addressing the issue, they may emphasize this point in an EOM. Now bear in mind, this is different than the substantial doubt about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern, which is required under a separate paragraph when that substantial doubt exists. So this could be an optional if the auditor believes based on the evidence collected, the management has a plan in place to alleviate that issue. Could be other matters as well. Anything that's in the notes or the financial statements, and we would like to emphasize for its importance, highlight, we can put in that paragraph. Now we have required emphasis of matters. What are some required? Well, let's talk about the required part. We might have to have an additional explanatory paragraph or ex explanation of matters affecting the consistency. What do we mean by consistency? Consistency means using the same accounting method from period to period to conserve comparability. So if you are using a different method from the prior year, if you're using FIFO versus LIFO or completed contract versus percentage of completion method, those are different accounting methods. If that's the case, you are not being consistent, you're violating comparability in a sense that the financial statements are not comparable. Under those circumstances, let me show you some examples. For example, if you have a change in accounting principle, you change from FIFO to LIFO, not in estimates. Bear in mind, not an estimate. That's consistency, changes in accounting principle. Error correction involving accounting principle. You made a mistake, not a mathematical mistake, a mistake in applying accounting principle, and now you're changing. That's going to violate consistency. Change in reporting entities. Before, you were not consolidating certain entities. Now, you are consolidating entities. Now, this is not a change in company strategy, like you have a new research and development project or new product line. When you have those changes, especially what we're emphasizing here, is changing in accounting principle and changing in reporting entities. Under those circumstances, the auditor is required, in a sense, to emphasize. Why? Because it's important. Because if you are using a different method last year, let's assume year one you were using FIFO, and year two you moved to LIFO, well, basically you are not consistent, and the financial statements are not really comparable, tell the users that. 
tell the users, just I want to draw your attention that that's the case. So this is what we mean by changes in accounting principle or errors involving accounting principle. Under those circumstances, you will explain. Also, if you have a, just, a justified departure from gap, remember, if you if you depart from gap, you have two options: either you qualify or you could you give an adverse opinion. Guess what? You could have a you could have a justified departure. You're justifying from gap, but the auditor thinks it's okay, it's acceptable. We're not even going to give you a qualified opinion. We're going to give you unqualified opinion. However, we're going to explain an emphasis of matter that that situation existed, that deviation exists. We want you to be aware of it. Nevertheless, we are still giving you an unqualified opinion. So if you are departing from gap, guess what? We have to explain that departure. Unqualified opinion still apply. We're not going to give you an adverse. We're not going to give you a qualified, but we have to explain. So under those circumstances, EOM is required. If you are, if we are using if we are preparing financial statements using special purpose framework, we have to emphasize this because we want to let the users that we're not, for example, we're not using GAP, we're using something other than GAP. So we want you to be aware of this. Also, what is required EOM is change in opinion from the preceding year. What does that mean? Let's assume in the prior year you had a different opinion, unmodified opinion. And for some reason, you change now the opinion to unmodified. Under those circumstances, you have to explain think about it for comparability purposes if you're looking at the report and you're saying the prior year now is unmodified and if somebody looked actually at the prior year and they saw something else well they're going to be confused so under those circumstances you are required to explain the difference between the two years you maybe have other other ones but those are usually the major one that are covered on the cpa exam as well as you're in, a, in, in your auditing course as discussed in note whatever note the financial statements uh, and the to the financial statements, the company has elected to change its policy for determining cash equivalent in 20x8. So simply put, the company changed the way they account for cash equivalent. And we're telling you this because we believe it's important that you know. Our opinion is not modified with respect to that matter. So remember, EOM, you are still giving a clean, unmodified opinion. At the end of this recording, I'm going to tell you to do what now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs true false that's going to help you understand this topic better good luck study hard invest in yourself and stay safe